Hey, it's Mike here, and today, alkaline diets. I'm finally doing a video on those, and the question is, what's real here? What's pseudoscience? There's a ton of different alkaline diets with a bunch of different claims made about healing properties all the way to probably in the realm of curing cancer, let's be honest. Alkaline diet blast! <gasps> you killed the cancer, Michiko! So, we're gonna have to investigate that. Sometimes I feel like acidity even becomes a bit of a loose term, like, acidity is a state of mind. So let's hit the studies, hit the research, and keep things digestible and not too long. Let's just get to it. You've probably heard that the Western diet is particularly acidic, and you might have even heard that that can make your blood more acidic or your overall body pH level be out of balance. And now you know I don't like Western diets already, but I'm just wondering to what degree would an alkaline diet really help and how much does pH really play a role in health? So we're gonna get to it. And I just wanna learn more. We can learn more about the body here. And speaking of our body, it it is very good at maintaining good normal pH under normal conditions from this book, quote, in the absence of pathological states, the pH of the human body ranges between 7.35 and 7.45, with the average being 7.4. And for some scale, some contrast, if you get up to 7.8 or down to 6.8, apparently you die. The body has several mechanisms to balance your pH. One of them is just breathing out. We breathe out carbon dioxide, which is acidic, and so that can help alkalize your body a little bit. Now, holding your breath actually makes you a little bit more acidic, but then hyperventilating can make you a little bit more alkaline or basic. <laughs> is that Gucci bag even real? The kidneys also play a major role in pH balance. They have two ways of doing this, the first of which they can recycle bicarbonate back into our bloodstream, which is a base, or they can secrete more hydrogen ions, which are acidic, which makes our blood less acidic. So for our body to go out of range, you know, it's probably not gonna happen for your average healthy person who probably wants to like detox just for the sake of it. But if you're in a pathological state, you have an issue with your body, like your kidneys with renal tubular acidosis. There's also lactic acidosis, which can be caused by various things. And then there's also diabetic acidosis. So these are ways that you can have something wrong with your body that leads to a more acidic state. And it's also worth mentioning that the acidity can rise as we get older and that is mostly connected to our kidney function going down, which is unfortunate, so gotta keep those kidneys healthy. But everybody ages, so this is relevant to everybody. Anyway, let's move on to the question, can diet really have an effect here? This brings me to this paper in the British Journal of Nutrition, which argues that yes, diet is a concern, but we have to make a big distinction here, and that is, it's not just about blood acidity, which is a separate issue from general acidosis or an acidifying effect on the body that your body has to fight and can stress your body over time. They point back in time in that through human evolution, we were eating a large amount of plant foods, which would have a more alkalizing effect. So that could be perhaps what our body is meant to deal with. And they cite another study that actually modeled about 160 different prehistoric diets and how acidic they were compared that to our current Western diet. And you can guess what trend it's going toward. Of about 160 prehistoric diets, they were alkaline on average with negative 88 units of acid load, while the average American diet is plus 48 units of acid load. Continuing along the same vein here from this next study, quote, acidogenic diets, which are typically high in animal protein and salt and low in fruits and vegetables can lead to a subclinical or low grade stoat or low grade state of metabolic acidosis. And you don't wanna have metabolic acidosis, low grade or not from this book, literally titled metabolic acidosis. It can be defined as an increase in those hydrogen ion concentrations in the circulation, which can result in that bicarbonate getting less than 24 micro equivalents per liter. In other words, your kidneys have to struggle to make that balancing act with the bicarbonate and the hydrogen. And it's something that you don't want to have stress in your kidneys over a long period of time. And from this study, while well, it might not change blood acid right away, quote, Western diet is characterized by high acid load that could generate various degrees of metabolic acidosis, of which at least the stronger forms are known to contribute to the progression of chronic kidney disease. So much so that eating a more alkaline way, or one could say alkaline diet, has been proposed as a treatment for chronic kidney disease from the study quote. Early studies suggest that lowering the dietary acid load can improve subclinical acidosis, preserve bone and muscle, 
and slow decline of glomerular filtration rate, our main kidney function marker in animal models and humans. And like this study that I recently covered in my gout video, alkaline vegetarian diets have been shown to help with gout, which is, you know, acid building up in your joints and leading to really painful arthritis, acid. And it's no surprise that plant-based diets in general have been recommended for the treatment of chronic kidney disease. You know, plant-based diets are generally way more alkaline unless you're eating super processed foods. And heck, I even found all the way back in 1985, the mention that in terms of comparing even different alkaline diets of a vegetarian versus vegan and meat eater, the vegan one was the most alkaline. Always feels good to be the best. That's why I'm vegan. This brings me to a very recent randomized control trial by Neil Bernard and his colleagues. I just mentioned this in my last video and that's what led down this whole rabbit hole and this video. Anyway, it's this randomized control trial that was 16 weeks long and it looked at two measures of dietary acid load. And one of those measurements was the same as those prehistoric simulated diets, neep. I made a chart for the first one, net endogenous acid production, which went down by about 50% in the vegan group. For the second measure, potential renal acid load, no change in the control, but the vegan group went down to negative 20, so they went alkaline. So yes, it is clear that a plant-based diet, a vegan diet is alkaline, and that is a good thing, but now we have to get into some more of the particular claims made around alkaline diets. And one of them, which if you're, you know, more old school vegan and was around for the teachings of various raw movements, you might've heard this one in the past. And that is that citrus, while being really acidic on your tongue, actually has enough minerals to create an alkalizing effect on your body. And I found a study that hints at an answer. This study gave people orange juice, lime juice, or melon, and then measured their urine pH and the results were actually mixed for citrus. Lime juice did not help alkalize. It did not, but the orange juice and the melon did with the melon being the best of the three. But it goes without saying that citrus down at a pH of like two or three can absolutely rot your teeth. And that's why sometimes we see these fruitarians with these kind of not so great teeth. And that brings me to bones really quickly. I do have a whole video about, you know, does dairy actually leach bone calcium so that it can neutralize your blood because dairy is so acidic. I talk about how no, that does not appear to be the case. Again, the body is good at buffering things and you just can't think that dairy is that acidic because of the amino acids in there and then have people eat straight plant protein, which is straight amino acids and be like, that's totally fine. Little bones will be fine. No, your body can handle that generally. However, it is worth mentioning that yes, dairy is horrible in so many freaking ways and have so many videos about that. It doesn't have to also include bone leaching anyway. In terms of general ability of a diet to leach acid from your bones, though, as this study mentioned, there is data on both sides of that equation. So jury is still a little bit out on this general concept, but I definitely think that it's more gonna be stress on your kidneys than leaching from your bones unless someone's really bad in a really bad disease state already. Anyway, moving on to another fun one, alkaline water, which is sold at great costs. I mean, that Kangen water machine is like $5,000 or something. I'm not gonna go too deep in this other than it is just my personal belief that it is not good to put a bunch of alkaline water all day in high amounts down into your stomach, which is acidic, because that's a defense mechanism for bacteria and things like we need to have a certain level of acidity and it's not really gonna have that much of an effect. It's just money gone, in my opinion. I also think that pathogen issue could be one possible explanation for why Ravana got SIBO. I have a whole video on that, and I even talk about a study that hints at alkaline water and stomach acidity not being a good relationship. Anyway, moving on to the big one here, which is the claims around alkaline diets and cancer. Like many well-meaning trends, they might start with a grain of truth from this study, quote, acidosis is a fundamental feature of the tumor microenvironment. And this MIT article covered that paper saying, quote, scientists have long known that tumors have many pockets of high acidity, usually found deep within the tumor where little oxygen is available. However, paraphrasing this new study found that tumor surfaces are also highly acidic and this can perhaps help them invade and spread. Finally, the senior author even suggests that therapies could target this acidity to help fight cancer. So it's by no means just pulled out of nowhere. And this brings me back to one of those papers on dietary acidosis because diet could perhaps have a relationship here. Quote, diet induced acidosis may influence molecular activity 
activities at the cellular level that promote carcinogenesis or tumor progression. And you can read that paper for the exact mechanisms. It's pretty theoretical, which brings me to, is there any studies on, you know, acid and diet and cancer? You know, we know that vegans have about a 15% lower cancer rate overall from this meta-analysis, but how much is that really playing a role? Well, we have a systematic review that looked at just a ton of hundreds of studies and it turns out only one met their criteria. So is it, it's a review, I guess. They say, quote, there is almost no actual research to support or disprove these ideas. The only study they looked at checked out things like bladder cancer. And well, they said it didn't have a relationship. It depends on if you're okay with the p-value of less than 0.1 or less than 0.05, because they said there was no trend, but it was 0.08 and it was like 1.7 times the odds. So that's at least notable. And their conclusion, quote, promotion of alkaline diet and alkaline water to the public for cancer prevention or treatment is not justified. And while I completely agree on alkaline water and that any claims need to really be modest when it comes to alkaline diets and cancer, the reality is that plant-based diets are just alkaline. And from this review, yeah, foods high in fiber and other phytochemicals are associated with less cancer. That's a trend across the board. From this 2021 study on breast cancer that I have never mentioned, quote, after controlling for potential confounders, individuals in the highest quartile of plant-based diet index had 67% lower odds of breast cancer than those in the lowest quartile. Seems like an okay prevention strategy. So it is correct to say that a diet that is plant-based that happens to be alkaline could be part of a greater strategy to prevent and perhaps fight cancer. But what is most likely going on here is that these alkaline diets being plant-based are simply just high antioxidant diets and high antioxidant diets are definitely going to be helpful for cancer because they buffer oxidative stress, which causes cancer. In the end, well, I'm sure there are some claims around alkaline diets and especially alkaline water that just go way too far. A plant-based diet is healthy in a lot of ways. You know, you don't want to fall for any super expensive products out there that probably don't have a benefit. So yeah, people need to be really careful making claims around cancer and alkaline diets. But at the same time, a Western diet absolutely is very acidic and that could absolutely lead to health issues, stress on the body and the kidneys down the line. I mean, processed meats and red meats are literally classified as carcinogens. So those are removed a lot of times. But yeah, it's really just about eating plants and whole plants and antioxidants and on and on. And that recent Neil Bernard randomized control trial showing, yes, there is a lower acid load in a vegan diet. All right, that's it for today. Let me know what you think about alkaline diets in the comments below and like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.